and uh, um, departure from sin in our lives, Lord, that any of those things that we do would point back to you. And Lord, you're uh, worthy of all praise, all honor. You're worthy of every attention. You're worthy of any uh, time that we spend uh, at your throne. And I pray that you'd make your throne in our heart rather than uh, over top of us as uh, your footstool. And so, God, uh, just looking forward to uh, your coming again. Pray for our country. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I pray that the soon coming of Christ would happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> if you have your Bible, Romans chapter 16. Romans 16. It's just like me. Right at the end, we're going to squeeze out a few more sermons out of this chapter, okay? Uh, uh, in fact, I, I want to tell you about one, but I'm going to preach it Sunday morning, so I can't tell you too much about it, um, but it's in this chapter as well. But let's stand, if you're able to, Romans 16, look at verse 25 and 26, Romans 16, 25 and 26. If you're wondering about my facial hair, when I am away, I don't shave. Can somebody say amen? amen. And then when uh, we're away, I bring out the colored shirts because all the white ones haven't been washed. Amen. So uh, th- my wife's like, oh, you look good. Yeah, that's my, that's my uh, addition here. But <clears throat> I'm usually a plain white guy with a shaved face. But uh, those uh, moments when I get away, then uh, I take advantage of it. So Romans chapter 16, verse number 25. Sorry, Nancy, I got facial hair again, right? Nancy, she's going she to let me have it. But uh, verse 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you again for your word. We ask that you bless it today. And I pray that as we uh, again try to illuminate it and open it up, that uh, you would um, get glory from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know I've been dancing around this verse a couple of times, so some of the things I'll say might be repeat, but if I forgot it, you probably forgot it too. So uh, that's the way these sermons go sometimes. But anyway, uh, this mystery, and a mystery is something that, that we don't know. Now, some mysteries have been revealed because now we know about them. Uh, they were mysteries at one time in Scripture, but then it's been fulfilled or opened up, so now... It's no longer a mystery, even though it was a mystery before God revealed it. I lose you there. Uh, <clears throat> mystery is just a mystery until you know it. You ever see a guy do a card trick, and you're like, how do he do that? I don't, that's so amazing. And then once you figure out, well, that's not a trick. That's just, I know how he did it now, and it doesn't, it's no longer a mystery, even though it was one. Uh, in, in Romans 16, at the end here, it talks about the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. We're talking to you about the faith of Jesus, how that resurrection is imperative in it last time, I believe. I was uh, here to uh, preach and teach. And then um, now we we get to this that's that's made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets. And uh, the mystery it's talking about is, is of Jesus. He's the mystery of godliness, that God would be clothed in flesh. How would that happen? You know, his birth was a mystery. His, uh, his burden is a mystery. How, when, when he came, how can you be Jesus if you're dying on the cross? Was some of the questions that they had. Not understanding everything that had been foretold, they had questions about that and through that. In verse 25 and 26, we are on the other end of it. Like, it's been revealed, here's the cross, Jesus was born, lived, now Paul's been saved, and now... <clears throat> been uh, given this revelation of another mystery that, that the church would be Jew and Gentile together. That was a mystery. No Jew wanted to be a part of a group that had Gentiles in it. It was worse than bad B.O., you know what I'm talking about? It was, uh, they, they just did not want to be a part of that. And so Paul says, no, this is the mystery that the body of Christ would be Jew and Gentile. It would be Cleveland fan and Cincinnati in the same building. Amen. It would happen like that. That's a mystery. And the Jews, it didn't make sense to them. 
And there's, there's a few mysteries, and uh, Sunday morning I'm going to preach about one that we are very interested in looking into all the time, uh, but I'll save that one for Sunday morning. In this verse, it was kept secret since the world began. Verse 26 says, but now is made manifest. <clears throat> that word manifest just simply means to make known, to let it be understood. Sometimes you say, oh, now their true colors are shining through, right? I was uh, carrying Judson around yesterday at the fair. We went, we went to go get a biscuit and gravy in the morning. And the lady that was at the little Bob Evans place, she's oh, he's so cute. And I'm like, from a distance, he's very cute. And, uh, and she's like, oh, you know. And, and then, then we went and got in line. And he was, oh, he was just showing off, waving like a politician. You know, he was just... He was just letting all his glory shown and, and uh, wanted the milk. We got him milk. Oh, he, he said, yay, like he was just so thrilled about the milk. And she said, oh, he's so, I said, uh-huh, yeah, he's letting it all show right now. Wait till his true colors come out around the corner. And I was teasing a little bit. But, you know, uh, th sometimes things can look differently than the way they really are once it's made known. Amen? I've uh, been taken a few times. I ordered something online, I thought what I was getting, and then when I got it, I'm like, that's not what I wanted, but that's what I got. It was manifest, I got taken. I was taken by the advertisement. <clears throat> manifest just means to be made known. And in this verse, notice this mystery is manifest. Now watch this, it's not by something new. Look at verse 26. This thing that was hidden from the, from the foundation of the world is made manifest and by the what? Scriptures of the prophets. Well, that's not even the New Testament. This is going to let us be made known from what they already had. It's like they had it, they just didn't know they had it. One of my favorite Preacher McInerney stories, and I'll never forget this, is the guy who got caught robbing a convenience store with an original Colt 45. And he robbed the convenience store for about $1,700, and he had in his hand a gun that was worth about $10,000. And he, he got arrested when he could have sold the gun that he robbed the place with instead of just robbing the convenience store. Amen. And Preacher McInerney always says, you have so much more in your possession than you know of, and, and that if you would just stop and take a look and see. It was just, he didn't know it. It's now made manifest. Wow. Sometimes you, you Christians, you don't realize you got the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit, God, presently in your heart. And we give, we give excuses to sin when I've got the Holy Spirit in me. We, we give, uh, let circumstances uh, overtake us when I've got the Holy Spirit in me. We've got uh, foes and fears and frights and I've got the Holy God in, in me. What? I've forgotten what's in me. I've got it. I just didn't uh, uh, ma make it uh, uh, manifest to my brain what's in my heart. And if I would have, then I'd have been able to, to move ahead a lot better. Anyway, that word manifest, there's some things that I want to make sure that you know and I know through the scripture today. So let's look at John chapter 1 and talk about just Jesus being manifest. While you're turning there, I'm going to go get a Kleenex so I don't run. I'll run and get a Kleenex instead of letting my nose run on the pulpit, okay? <laughs> Trying to mute that microphone before I blew my nose there. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, and look at verse 31. This is John talking about Jesus. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. So John, he said... Uh, in verse 32, bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, 
The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. <clears throat> Jesus, I'm sure, there were rumors and there was uh, rumblings about who he was back when he was a kid. Remember, he's answering the questions of the doctors in the, in the, uh, uh, the temple. And I'm sure there were questions about who he was and his mother. Oh, that's the boy that they claim was born from a vir. I'm sure there was all kinds of, of rumors and rumbling. But when John <clears throat> had the respect of all those around him, he said, it's not because he's my cousin. It's not because uh, of what I've heard. The one who told me to come baptize, and remember they were all wondering why he was baptizing, but they really couldn't argue with him because he was such a powerful preacher. He said, the one who told me to baptize told me that the one that's made manifest, the one that's made known, that the Holy Spirit would come rest upon, that's the Son of God. And John, ending of his ministry was the beginning of Jesus' ministry, making known that Jesus was the one. I've heard people say, well, how do you know your faith's true? How do you know this and that? And I just take them back to Jesus and say, well, do you know there was a man named Jesus that walked the earth? Well, I believe that. Then do you believe that he did what he said he did? Well, I don't know. That's, that's always the, the, the conclusion of faith. So <clears throat> John, a respected preacher, respected man of Israel, not, not of the church, not of the New Testament, but of the Old Testament, he said, made manifest as Jesus. Look at John 14. John chapter 14, verse 21. So the first thing we're talking about just in Romans, how that the scriptures would make known Jesus. And I'm just going to use the New Testament today. Next week, we'll go over some of the Old Testament ones that make known Jesus. But today, John 14, look at 21 and 22. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will what? Manifest myself to him. <clears throat> when you love Jesus and when you keep his commandments, Jesus said, I will make myself known unto you. Look at verse 22. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, not the, not the traitor, Lord... How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? How are you going to do that? How are you going to make yourself known unto us and not to the rest? Because you think if you're going to make yourself known, everyone would, would see it. It's being made known. Verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. I'm telling you, if you just try and attempt and put your heart into loving God and living for God, God will make himself known to you. <clears throat> More than just the scriptures, but through the situations and the, uh, the things of your life. I mean, you all are here because you believe in Jesus. Would you all say amen? amen? And I'm just guessing that you've had some interactions where you know God has done something specifically and directly with you. You're not here to try, for me to try to convince you. That's the Sunday morning crowd, right? That's, that's the crowd I get to preach that to get saved and evangelized. You're here because you, I know. I know my Redeemer lives. I believe him. I believe in, in the way things have taken place and the answers of prayer. I, I believe in the personal things that, that just God has revealed. And, and when that happens, it's because he made himself known to you. Now, he has made himself known to the rest of the world. It's not that you are the only one that's given evidence to believe, but he's promised to do that as you believe. Go to Romans chapter 1. Look at this one. Look at 
Romans chapter 1, verse number 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So <clears throat> when God says something's wrong and God makes a rule or a command and then people go against it, it is incumbent upon God to reveal his wrath and to make consequences because of that. You say, well, you just live how you want and it works for you. No, no, that's not, that's not the way life works if God's real. It's not just what works for me. It's what will work no matter who you are, where you are, because God's put his command on it. And then when I don't follow his commands, it's incumbent. He has to bring some wrath and some judgment because if he doesn't, then he's not revealing himself consistently to the whole world. Does that, does that make sense? So when it says judgment starts at the house of God, well, that's tough. Well, yeah, because the people of God should know what he wants. And so when they're not doing it, he's going to have to start it there. Or how could he reveal it against everyone? Well, I just don't get away with anything, preacher. Yeah, you shouldn't. You big, big, big Bible believer, you. You should be the first one to get disciplined. Look at 19. Because, how can God reveal wrath against all ungodliness? Well, they didn't know. They were just ignorant. No, that doesn't work. Look at verse 19. Because, he can do that, because that which may be known of God is what? Manifest in them. That word manifest, made known. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither, will th neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So God has made known himself to everyone that you should be able to believe in God by seeing the creation around. And my goodness, how amazing is the creation around us. It just is mind-boggling how if, if science is true in everything, which I don't believe science is true in everything, and by the way, neither does the CDC or any other government agency. They don't all know what they're doing. They're humans just trying to practice, and, and we can get frustrated about all that stuff, but science is constantly changing. What seems to be true is not, and then what seems to be tr not true is. How many of you ever heard about it's bad to eat eggs, and it's good to eat eggs, and it's wrong to eat eggs, and it's right to eat eggs? And I don't know. I'm just going to keep eating eggs. It, too much milk, that not enough milk, and milk's good for your Everybody drink milk. Everybody drink, oh, no, we got too much milk. We're the only people that drink milk as adults, and none of the animal does it. I just like milk, so I keep drinking it. There's constant stuff that, that how, who would know? How could you know? Hey, let's, we got to make things grow, so we got we to gotta spray off the weeds, and we got to put, oh, now we need organic. We got to have weeds because we can't have spray. How would a farmer, how would anyone know what's true in all these things? God says, you can know I'm true by the creation around, not by the science. But if science were true in everything, you realize how amazing it is that we don't burn up here and we don't freeze here either? Yeah. How we got enough oxygen even when they're cutting down all the trees? Yeah. And we got enough oxygen, or we, we can still have a lack of oxygen when we're grazing, raising up all the trees. How in the world? God is made known by what we look around and how, what we experience. And you think, wow, it's amazing that I've got a hand that works and I've got eyes that see and it's all sewn up in one fingerprint, just unique to me. You could take any part of me and identify me. My wife always says, if you ever die, I'm going to know it's you by the little hair patch you have on your wrist right there. I'm going to be able to identify you and look in there. And I even shave it sometimes. It just grows back. I got one gorilla mark right there. I'm like, she's like, I know it's you by your wrist. I can tell by the, by the hair on your wrist. 
Everybody can know there's a God. It's made known. It's manifest. You can know him if you follow him and you live for him. He'll make himself known to you directly. Before you know him, you can still know him because he's made known by all the things that are around us. It's made known. Let me give you a couple other things that are made known. Go to 1 John chapter number 2. 1 John chapter 2. <clears throat> I have been uh, accused. I have been um, uh, teased and, and made fun of, uh, not directly, but with ministry things. Oh, you think everybody that prays gets saved, and you guys all got all these numbers, and I don't know if they really all got saved, and I'm, I always say I don't either. Uh, it's not, I'm not the judge. I just tell people how I got saved and uh, let them know that they can trust in Christ the same way that I did. But people have said, well, you, you, you can't go out and just get someone saved in five minutes, and they're not really saved if they pray with you on the street. Oh, how do you know? My first question, how do you know? And what, what supernatural judgmental uh, radar do you have? <clears throat> I just put it back on them. I don't let it uh, offend me. I don't let it... Uh, uh, Brother Dave Holloway was so upset. He called me in Tennessee, and he said, Preacher... I was, I was witnessing, and this other preacher came up and started scolding me about what I was doing. I'm like, why didn't you give me the phone, man? Let me have at him. I'll, I'll put him in his place, and you just keep trying to witness. Whether you're doing it perfect or not, just keep trying to tell people about Jesus. 1 John chapter 2, it will be made known eventually. The Bible says, let the wheat and the tares grow up together. And then at the harvest, God will he'll divide it. Do you think everyone's saved in Bible Baptist Church? I hope they all are. But I really don't want to go back and pick and say who is, who isn't. That'd be rough, wouldn't it? You're like, don't pick now. I don't want to judge me. I don't know. The only one I really know saved is me. I believe my wife is or I wouldn't have married her. But I don't know for sure anyone is. I think Will is, but I don't know for sure. Sometimes he stays with me. That, that doesn't show a good discernment right there. Uh, Look at 1 John 2, verse number 18. Here's that word manifest. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. I won't name them, but a lot of them are in politics uh, right now. Uh, whereby we know what it is, what we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Verse 22, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denied the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. It's these verses right there that why we are very strong against certain churches who do not believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. If you've got a group that denies that Jesus is deity, that's a direct, a direct verse against it right here. You cannot have the Father without the Son, and you can't have the Son without the Father but you've got to have them both to be biblical in our faith. So it says sometimes people go out from among the group of Christians because they were never a Christian. Now I say this every time I read this verse, that doesn't mean if Sandy Thompson changes churches next week that she wasn't a Christian and she left us, she left our group because she never was saved. Okay, I'm not judging Sandy if she decides to go to another church. If Sandy gets out of church... I'm not saying, well, see, she got out of church. She probably was never saved. I don't think we can make those judgments at all. <clears throat> but the scripture makes that explanation that when someone don't stay with the stuff, it might be because they didn't have the stuff. Why didn't I stay involved with fishing my whole life? Because I found a driver's license, and it was a lot funner to go drive a car than stay by a pond and go fishing all day. Why didn't I stay with, high, with, with the junior high track? Because I got tired of running races and not dribbling a ball, and I wanted to dribble a ball more than I wanted to run a race. It, I, it was made manifest that I did not stick with it. Why, why have I stuck with 
some other things. Well, I'll tell you why I'm still married, because I found the best one. There ain't no reason to improve upon that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and satisfied. And there, I'm not leaving. I'm going to love. I'm not going to leave, right? Amen. Look, why am I staying in church? Because I found it. I, I tasted the Lord, and he's good. Yeah. I've seen the benefits. Oh, there's some burdens, but I've seen the blessings. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't going to get me to leave church. Right. You can try all you want. You can even vote me out, and I'll go to another one. Yeah. When you find something that you know that you, you need it, you want it, you got it, you love it, you're not going to leave it. Now, are there times in people's life because of circumstance and because of trial tribulations, they might not be as close as other times? Yes. Yes, that happens. Okay? And the devil don't fight fair. Sometimes when it, it's out of your control, then he brings other things to hit you more with that. Uh, th that happens. But the prodigal son came back. He did come back. He was gone a long time. He'd gone along lo wrong things, but he did come back because he was always the son the whole time. Anyway, it's made manifest. Look at uh, 1 John 3.10. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now the verse in front of it talk about, hey, if you commit sin, you're of the devil. And for the purpose, the Son of God, I'm reading, reading verse 8, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. I'm going to explain that verse because I don't want to just gloss over it too quickly. What you do makes it known what you believe. It just does. We are not saved by works, but we sure are shown by our works. It just shows what we believe. <clears throat> and sometimes that's convicting because we thought we believed something and it shows that we must not have really believed it because it's happening in our life. What am I going to do about that? And have you ever been in that conflict before? I'm glad that you are because that means that you're not what you're doing and you want to get out of that conflict. It happens sometimes. I've, uh, <clears throat> I found myself on an international tractor last week. Oh, my goodness, what in the world was I doing? And I told the guy, don't take any pictures. I don't want this to get out, but I was driving an international tractor, raking some hay, and Mike Wallace took pictures and sent them to my dad. I couldn't believe it. And I called my dad, and he said, boy, I'm about to disown you. I saw that picture of you on that tractor. I'm like, oh, no. <clears throat> I, I, now, I'm not on it today. I got off that thing, but I, I'm teasing a little bit. But, you know, uh, uh, whatever you believe in, sometimes you find yourself in conflict with that belief. It happens. Yeah. Welcome to humanity. Welcome to being a sinner. Can you all say amen? amen. But at the same time, it is manifested that when you do right, it's because you're a child of God. Verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. That's what's born of God. If you're born of God and you're saved in here today, it doesn't mean that you never sin with your body and your flesh, but it means what was born of God is your spirit, and that spirit, it cannot sin. And that's why your spirit's got to leave the body so you can go to heaven without that sinful flesh. Now, the key to live victoriously is to recognize that your spirit is still in this body, and we've got to put the body in subjection. I'm not going to let my body dictate to my spirit what we're going to do. Your body does dictate some things. It tells you when you're hungry. It tells you when you're thirsty. When you're in church service, it might tell you when you're sleepy. Amen. I, you know, it tells you things all the time. <clears throat> it tells you, and, and, it, and it relays messages, and you are, you're, you're attached to that body. But when it comes to sinful things, substances, and sinful, lustful desires, your body's going to give you messages, and your spirit says, no, you're not in control. And when you fast, if you ever do that, you're saying, no, body. We're not eating today. And the body's like, why not? We ate eaten every other day. Come on, bring it in. <clears throat> your, your back's about to sue your belly for non-support. That's my favorite joke. I love that joke. Uh, you, you know, you, you, need some, you need nourishment. And you say, no, we're not eating today. 
because we're praying and we're trying to make sure that you, flesh, know that you're not in control. That's how you can tell you have a spirit and a flesh when there's an argument back and forth. If you don't have that argument, you may not have a spirit. But if you've been saved, you have that argument from time to time. Well, I want to do this wrong thing. Why can't I do it? And your spirit says, because it's wrong. And I don't want to do it. Yeah, but I do want to do it because I think it'll make me feel good. And then your spirit says, we've been, we've done, we've been down this road before. You feel regret. You feel remorse. Then you have to repent. Let's just not go through that. Verse 9 says, when you're born of God, that spirit cannot sin. But it's made manifest who you are by what you do there. <clears throat> Look at, um, go back with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Let me go a couple more of these manifests. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 9. Who hath saved us, called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This is not Calvinistic chosen. This is just purpose of God plan that Jesus would be given for all man. And that's how you know that it's not a, a one chosen and not another. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have. He didn't say for God so loved the, the, the church. He did give Jesus for the church, but completely he gave Jesus for everyone. Verse 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. See, it's made known <clears throat> through Jesus Christ. That's what Romans 16 is saying. Hey, this before, uh, it was a mystery. Now it's made known. And here he's made known life after death. He brought life and immortality to light. He abolished death. Whose death did Jesus pay for? Adam. Mankind, not just certain men, but all mankind. For by one man, sin brought death into the world. And so by one man, sin would be taken out. And it's manifest, made known to us. One more, go to, or two more. Go to Titus uh, chapter 1, just a couple pages over. Titus chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. And hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. The way that you, the word of God is made known, it's through preaching. That's God's plan to let everybody know what is being said and what's being revealed to us. Then look at um, um, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Just showing you some of these manifest. <coughs> this is not a manifesto, okay? This is just uh, things being made known from the scripture. Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 17, 18, 19. Let's start in 16. Here's that wrestling. Here's that... that um, uh, making manifest that you've got a spirit and you still have a flesh if you're saved. This I say then, verse 16, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So your flesh is going to be lusting, it's going to be wanting things, but it says if you walk this direction, you won't, you won't be able to take the order of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are what? Manifest. Okay, have you ever seen uh, two teams play tug of war? <clears throat> and they got this flag, and you got, or maybe a mud hole, whatever it is, and these kids over here are going to pull, 
and those kids over there are going to pull, and they're trying to get the flag to their side. That's what they're trying to do. But somebody's pulling against them. And then they pull, and they huff, and they puff, and then finally some adult grabs the rope and ends up winning for some team. That's what always happens in tug of war. It looks like it's even some, some cheater grabs the rope, and then they win for the team. What's happening is you've got a tug of war, but your spirit and your flesh, and who wins is whoever gets the most strength to pull it over. But watch, this spirit is pulling, but it can't do what it wants to do because someone's pulling against it. Well, how do you know what's pulling against it? Here are the works. Here they are. Verse 19. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, which, by the way, is pharmakeos. It's drugs. That's what the, the translation is. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and here it is, such like. It's not a, an all-inclusive list, things that are like that. <clears throat> of that which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You're right. People do those things, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's got to be given by salvation. Yeah. When you have those works in your life, it ought to be made known my flesh is showing up. It's pulling against where I want to go. Do I have those? Preacher, I don't even know what half those are. Get you a, de a dictionary and look them up. If you're, if you're not sure, get you a dictionary and, and you, Google it. Or duck, duck, go it. Don't Google it. Duck, duck, go it, right? Uh, uh, use some other search engine. I like duck, duck, go. I used to like duck, duck, goose anyway. So uh, duck, duck, go. Use that. And, and look up the words and then say, is that in my life? Because I'm telling you, you'll not be the way, places you want to walk when those things are going on in your life. It'll be made known, these are the works of the flesh. So, anyway, I've got to close. There's one more thing that's going to be made known. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, no one knows what everybody else is doing in their life the whole time. You can't know it. I, I've been at the fair the last few days, only you don't even know that because I told you, but no one knows what I've been doing, where I've been going. You can tell I haven't had a razor in my hand, right? But uh, some things are not made known until later on. You just don't know what's going on. When we don't hear Judson making noise, we're like, uh-oh, go find him, what's going on? I don't hear rumble, this could be trouble, we got to figure out what he's doing, 1 Corinthians 3 says this, verse number 12 and 13. Now, if any man build upon this foundation of Christ, I just throw that in there, but it's verse 11. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. Every man's work shall be made what? It's all going to be made known. Christian, <clears throat> no one else knows what you're doing. It will be made known. Well, I'm okay because no one knows it. You're not okay because God knows it. You may seem okay because no one knows it, but it will be made known what you're doing. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. This description is of the Christian's judgment where all of our works are judged. And when all those works are judged, God will give a reward or you will suffer loss because of your works. Now, you yourself are not being judged. You've been saved by Jesus Christ, but your works are being judged. Taryn had a steer at the fair. She showed her dairy steer yesterday, and uh, she did a good job, and she took that steer out there, and she walked it, and I was so glad it didn't trample her, step on her, pull her, uh, drag her. It was awesome. The, the steer did exactly what she wanted, and she pulled it in the place, and she stopped it there, and she had a little stick, and she's moving her feet, and... And, and the judge went by, and you know what? That steer did not get first place. It wasn't Taryn's fault. She showed the steer perfectly. I don't know if the judge said anything to her, but I watched, and, and it, there was, you couldn't have showed the steer any better. But the steer itself just wasn't very worthy of first place. Taryn was not judged. Her steer was judged. You follow me? Now, if Taryn would have done showmanship... 
they could have cared less how her, they, she could have brought in a dog at the steer show. And, but if she showed that dog correctly and moved his feet and walked him around, and you say, well, that don't look like a very good steer. Yeah, it's my dog. But the way she showed it, she would have been judged at showmanship. You follow me? You are judged if you have Jesus or not. That's when you yourself are judged. At the judgment seat of Christ, your works are judged, and you'll be rewarded how good or how bad those are. See the difference? I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm not being judged. It's just my works. But I'm also fearful that I want my works to bring forth a reward. Yeah. And it's going to be made known what I've been doing. It's going to be made known because that day will declare it. All those works are going to be burned up and only the gold, silver, and precious stone will remain. And it'll be made manifest. It will be made known. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes a while for us to figure out what's really been going on in governor's mansions, in, uh, in mayor's offices, in judges' quarters. But eventually those things are made known. Listen, let's just be real. I'm sure there's a lot of things in people's lives that have been covered up and no one's ever found out. Not at the judgment seat of Christ. It'll all come out. Everything will be known. Your motives, your manners, your missions, your, um, uh, your materials. So... The Bible says we persuade men with the terror of the Lord about the judgment seat of Christ. I think what we do after we're saved matters extremely. I'm so thankful what he did saved me because that mattered foundationally. But hey, let's keep doing things for God, okay? Let's just uh, let's try to build up those works and have some gold, silver, and precious stone that when Jesus comes, he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant, and we can rejoice together. I, I hope that um, some of the things that we do as a church, we can rejoice together. When I tell you about someone who got saved or someone uh, who uh, we were able to send money to a missionary, can you imagine if we were a church of 25 people and the missionary was in the hospital and said, hey, I need some help. I'm like, sorry, we got 25 people here. We can't help pay that bill. But you know what? I didn't have to call and take an emergency vote. We just send, a little, send some money because we've already got it. Thank the Lord. There's some blessings of, of our work together, and I, I want to hope to encourage you how important it is. It is so important that we work together. And if we don't see it down here, there's going to be a pile one day of Bible Baptist Church, and they're going to set it on fire. Oh, there's going to be some works burned up. <clears throat> some bad jokes are definitely going to burn up on that day, okay? It's going to happen. But there's going to be some good things that remain and we'll get to throw reward together and uh, at Jesus' feet. Here it is. Some of y'all, Cheryl, you've been from the beginning. Sharon, almost the beginning. Charlene, from the beginning. Wow. From the beginning of the church, they've been here. There's going to be some crowns of faithfulness and consistency. Taryn, you were almost at the beginning, but you weren't born yet. Okay, you came a little later. Uh, th there's going to be some crowns of just st sticking with it. Hey, some of you folks have just come in. Man, you jumped up. Thank the Lord. We need, we, yes, it's going to be a part. All of that, Christ will figure it out. I hope I encourage you as we go along the way because you're very important. I preached too long. I haven't been all week. I took advantage of the time. Let's go. Father in heaven, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for making it known to us about Jesus. Lord, thank you for making known these works of the flesh so I can measure what's leading me, what has been guiding me and taking me. I pray that the spirit would, not the flesh. Lord, thank you for saving my spirit, that it cannot sin. I'm so glad I'm going to heaven because of you. And then, God, I pray that as uh, these things are made known, Lord, that you'd make yourself known to every believer in a special way. Maybe it's something that's uh, brought up, someone that's uh, brought into your life, and you, you make it known, and what a blessing that you'll make yourself known unto those who love you. Then, God, I pray for the lost world.